welcome to our fireside chat. Thank you for tuning in today and being with us. Uh, today we will be talking about choice or choosing. And I'm always touched by Joshua's statement at the end of his life when he spoke to the Israelites and he said this to them in Joshua 24. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your fathers, your forefathers served beyond the river or the god of the Amorite in, Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We make choices every day, and it's so important to choose God's way. Several years ago, when I was teaching a Bible class, I always try to have a song, a theme song, that will stick in the minds of the children uh, because we learn that way. We learn so much with song, and we sang this song. We are making choices every day. We are choosing either Satan or God's way. Choosing what is right is always our goal. Choices of right must never grow old. We are making some choices, making some choices, making some choices every day. We must make the right choices, make the right choices, make the right choice and choose God's way. And that's what Joshua said he would do. Fern, I recall that you're the one that wrote that song. And uh, you wrote a lot of songs for children years ago when you were teaching a lot of children's classes. Well, hello, everyone. We're glad that you joined us today for the Fireside Chat. Uh, we were off last week because I was playing 100 holes of golf last week on Wednesday. And... Uh, we couldn't do the fireside chat, but uh, we're glad to be back this week. And thanks to several of you who not only supported me in the golf Ironman, but you also have contacted us and said, hey, where is our uh, fireside chat this week? So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we made a choice months ago when this pandemic first hit that we wanted to do a fireside chat once a week to reach out to friends, and let people know what's going on with us and with the ranch. And uh, it's been a great encouragement to us to hear from so many of you. Actually, so thank we you. made a choice to say yes to Brian, who suggested it. <laughs> yes. That's true. <laughs> Brian Hudkins is a great persuader, isn't he? Twist your arm. Um, we uh, want to kind of start. Uh, this portion of this little fireside chat by just reminding ourselves for her that uh, in the first chapter of Genesis, God created the first man and the first woman. And he said in Genesis 1, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then the Bible says that he created them male and female. Uh, part of that likeness to God that all of us have in our lives is, is a it's what I call creativity. And God has empowered us with choice. That we can make choices in our lives. Uh, we have free will. And God made us that way. And the very first couple, Fern, made uh, a bad choice in the garden, didn't it? And now look what has happened. We have a fallen world. Sin has come into the world. Uh, sickness and evil has come into the world because of bad choice. And I, then a lot of people down through the centuries have made bad choices, but many people have made some good choices. God chooses us because He loves us and He wants what is best for us, but we can reject it. And when we do, there are consequences. Yes. Uh, I want to read a few verses on the fact that God has chosen us. Um, the first one is Ephesians 1.4. For he chose us in him, that is in Jesus, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. Isn't that a powerful statement? That in Jesus Christ, God chose us even before the world was created. And Jesus was the one who created the world. He was involved in it, according to John chapter 1 and verse 1. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 
But we ought always to thank God for you. Brothers, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. So God has chosen us to be saved through the work of the Holy Spirit and through the truth, which Jesus said, the truth is what makes you free. And then 1 Peter 2, 9, which is one of my favorite verses. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. We're God's people. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So God has made a choice. And his choice is for you to be a part of his family. For you to uh, love him and obey him. And for you to love the people around you and even people that you don't know. And he empowers you to do that through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and through your understanding of truth. And the more we understand God's truth and the more we understand God, the better able we are to make the right kind of choices in our lives. I read not long ago this little quote, Faith is life, knowledge is death, and choosing the correct one is wisdom. So there's always life and death as choices out there for all of us. And we need to have wisdom so that we make the right choice. I, it's sobering to think of what Moses said even before Joshua took his place in leadership when he told the people of Israel long ago, life and death, he, he said, this command I give you today is not too hard for you. It is not a secret hidden in some faraway land. The command is not in heaven so that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and bring it to us so that we can hear and do it? And he said, uh, or who will go across the sea for us and bring it to us uh, so that you can hear it? No, the truth is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, and you can obey it. God doesn't give us anything that's too hard to obey. Sometimes we think, well, yes. I just couldn't be a Christian because it's too hard to walk that way. And he does say, Jesus did say, it's straight and narrow and few people will follow it. But God says he doesn't give us anything that's too hard for us to obey it. Most, he said, today I have given you a choice between life and death, success and disaster, I command you to follow the rules, to obey his commands, laws. Then you will live, and your nation will grow larger, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take for you on. But if you turn away from God and refuse to listen, if you are led away to worship and serve other gods, you will be destroyed. I am warning you today. Today, I'm giving you a choice of two ways. And I ask heaven and earth to be witness of your choice. You can choose life or death. The first choice will bring you a blessing. The other choice will bring you a curse. So choose life. Mm -hmm. Then you and your children will live. You must love the Lord and obey Him. Many years ago, I told one of my sons who was being rebellious at the time, someday you're going to wish that you had chose God's way. And when that time comes, you're going to say, I'm so sorry, I've wasted all those years. When we choose life and choose God's way, we don't have to live with regrets. Amen. We can come to the end of our life and and have a great life even while we're here on earth, even in the midst of pain and suffering, because we learn to be joyous even through that, and we learn to be thankful. But if we choose not to follow God's way, then we choose death. Even here in this life, it's a miserable life, and 
at the end of life, when we enter the other side, we choose eternal death. But we uh, have made some choices in our lives, Fern. Right. We we chose to uh, have children. We chose to get married first. Well, I chose long before we got married to marry a godly man, and I prayed <laughs> at a very young age that God would give me. In fact, I was only 12 years old when I prayed that God would give me a man who would love Him and would follow Him, and I could work with Him. Well, we also chose to adopt a child. Yes. We chose to have a lot of foster children over yes. these years. And after Timothy's death, we chose to uh, take his dream and uh, surround it with prayer and tell it to a few friends, and the ranch came into existence. And has grown and grown. And has grown and grown and grown. So uh, uh, all of life is about choices. I have a few choice quotes that I want to share before we close for uh, Ryan Lilly said, the choice you make, good choices, is the best choice you can choose. Fail to make that choice, and on most choices, you will lose. So he's saying, make a, make a choice to make good choices. And that's really something that would be help, helpful to all of us. William James once said, when you have to make a choice and don't make it, that is in itself a choice. So sometimes when we are facing choices and we don't make any choice at all, that's a choice. Uh, one of my favorite uh, jokes is about uh, the fact that there are many, many squirrels in the middle of highways all over America that have been run over because they couldn't make a choice. They couldn't decide which side of the road they were going to go on, and so a car came along and ran over them. Uh, here's another one. You can let things define you, destroy you, or strengthen you. It's your choice. And I, I love that little quote. And uh, here's, a, here's a copy of it. You can get these on the internet as well. Here's one from uh, Johnny Cash. I love some of his music. He said, all your life you will be faced with a choice. You can choose love or hate. I choose love. That's a good choice for all of us to make, to choose love instead of hate. There's one that says life is a matter of choice, and every choice makes you. Yes, that's true. Happiness is a choice. You're the only person who can make you happy. You're as happy as you choose to be. This is about Rick Warren, which is a great author. Um... Here's another one from Zig Ziglar Fern, who is one of my favorite guys years ago. He's passed on now. But he said, every choice you make has an end result. So every choice that you make has an end result. The choices you make now are really determining what your future is going to be. Isn't that powerful? And to those young people that might be listening, if there are any young people listening, I urge you to choose God's way. Choose to listen to Him daily. And choose to talk to Him daily. And choose to let Him guide you through the life here on earth. And choose to obey your parents. Or at least choose to listen to them. If they choose God's way, they will obey. They them. will obey, that's true. Um, and encourage your parents to have meal times together and sit down at the table and talk with them. And you will find out that you have a whole lot in common with your parents. May your choices reflect your hopes and not your fears. This was a, a quote from Nelson Mandela of South Africa. May your choices reflect your hopes and not your fears. And then I like this one. Attitude is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Optimism is a choice. Kindness is a choice. Giving is a choice. Respect is a choice. Whatever choice you make makes you choose wisely. So the more good choices we make, the wiser we become. And the book of Proverbs certainly is a great emphasis upon that uh, wonderful truth. Life is all about making choices. Always do your best 
to make the right ones and always do your best to learn from the wrong ones. Uh, one of the ways we gain wisdom is when we make a wrong choice and we learn from it. Some people make the wrong choice and continue to make it over and over and over. Uh, so we encourage you to learn from your mistakes and to learn from uh, your strengths and, and decide that God, has, who has given you the power of choice in your life, that you're going to use it to be a blessing to God and a blessing to mankind. I'm so glad that you tuned in today to our fireside chat and I hope that we can see you again next week so until then may the good Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace thank you for joining us